All right, we are continuing on with part two of our lesson one of chapter five. I am on the very next page, and we're going to go over these examples. Elena and her dad played golf on four different days. The data, negative one plus one, negative three, positive two, shows Elena's scores in relation to par. Par means that's how many um, times you're allowed to hit the ball to make it in the hole. So if you go golfing, even if it's miniature golf, it'll say like par four. That means that you should be able to get that ball in the hole in four shots. If you make it in less than that, it's actually a negative number, and that's a good thing in golf. If you go over four shots, then everyone after that is a plus number, and you don't want that. So actually in golf, negative numbers are a really good thing. Okay, draw a number line and draw the dot at the location of each. All right, we have, what do we got here? Actually, let me erase this. Okay, we have a negative one. Oh, they already did that for us. That's a good shot. Positive one means that they went over par by one. Negative three means they went way under, so that's really a good score. And positive two means they went over, okay? The integer zero represents par. So if par was four shots and it said, you should be able to make the shot and you should be able to make it in the hole in four shots, then par means that you did exactly that. You made it in four shots, all right? And let me tell you, I'm a golf pro. That's right. Actually, no, it's not. I've been known to many putt a time or two and do pretty darn good, but uh, on a regular golf course, it's not very pretty. Okay. Write an integer for each situation. Explain the meaning of zero. All right. We have a 15-yard gain. 15-yard gain would be a positive or negative. Right. It's a positive. So we got 15. That's writing our integer for the situation. And what would zero mean? Zero means no gain. No gain, no loss. Okay? Just means they, they stayed right where they were. A loss of two hours. A loss of two hours. So that would be a loss means a positive or negative. Right? Negative. Because we lost it. It's, it's gone. A loss of two hours. Zero means... Um, we didn't lose or gain an hour. Well, that's a gain. So zero means no loss or gain of time. All right, it's asking us to graph these integers on a number line, and they don't give us anything. That's not very nice. When they give you a blank number line, you can really start wherever you want to. Since this is a negative number, you know what? I'm going to make this my zero because I don't have any positive numbers to have to graph anyway. So I can make this negative one. I got two. I got three. There's a lot of different answers you could use for this one. I could have put zero right here and done negative one, negative two, and I, it would have worked. Okay? So if you get a blank one, you can pretty much put them wherever you need them. I've got negative two. I just got to put a dot where negative two is. The next one they give us 0, 1, and negative 1. So I gotta at least have a 1. So I'm gonna throw my 0 right here. I'm gonna make this my 1, which means to the left is negative 1, negative 2. And that wants us to plot these points. So we've got negative 1 can go here, a 1 can go here, and 0 would be right here. Now, could I put my zero right here and the negative one and positive one, positive two? Sure. As long as your numbers can fit in there, you can put them wherever you want to. If it's blank, okay? All right, if you need to pause, pause. I'm gonna erase to move on. My voice is so scratchy today. What is going on? All right. Probably all that pizza ate last night at Char Char's birthday. All right. The data set, positive 5, 0, negative 15, plus 20, shows the number of points Delaney scored on each hand of a card game. Graph the scores, explain the meaning of 0 in each situation. Now, notice that this goes by 5s, okay? You don't have to count everything as a 1, 2, 3, 4. Your number line is going to be atrociously long. So what if we just did, this is our 0, and to the right we counted up by 5s, and to the left we went down by 5s. So this would be 5. 10, 15, 20, and to the left would be negative 5, 
negative 10, negative 15, negative 20. All right, let's see if we can plot all those points. Change the color here. We've got plus 5 ding, ding, right there. Okay. We've got a 0 right there. Negative 15 way down there. And positive 20 is way up there, and they all fit. All right, building our question, how can we use integers to represent data? Well, there's lots of ways we could use integers to represent data. We can use it to represent uh, what money that we have, right? Um, we can use it to represent golf scores. Um, football, stats, right? Like how much yards we gained or lost. Um, we can look at just the tons of tons of different things we can look at data. We can look at our map scores, map scores, that big test we take in the, in the um, fall, winter, and spring, right? And when we make that goal and we say, oh, you went down by one, that means you went negative one. If you went up one, then you got a positive one. Okay, so that's a big one too that we can use here at school um, is how much we went up or down. You can use it even in your percentages. Did you go down a percentage in your class? Did you go up in percentage in your class? All right, I want you to take a moment, rate yourself on how you feel you're doing. I just moved that line graph, so don't ignore those, ignore those right now, but I wanted to bring this up. How confident are you about integers and graphing? I want you to check that box and see what all applies. All right, if you have any questions after this, make sure that you come and see me, all right, and we will um, be working more on this as we go. All right, if you need extra help, I can also do the extra practice with you. Independent practice is going to be your homework. So have a great day. Make great choices. See you soon.